Imagine standing face to face with a fierce Amazon warrior, her eyes blazing with courage as she prepares for battle. Welcome to the exciting world of Greek mythology. Today, we dive into the legend of the Amazons, the fearless women who lived in a land of strength and bravery. In this story, you'll uncover their incredible battles, meet their powerful queens, and discover the mysterious lands they called home. By listening, you'll unlock secrets and amazing adventures from the past. Don't miss out on more thrilling stories. Subscribe now so you can hear every fascinating legend. Sit back, relax, and let's begin the tale of the Amazons. Chapter 1. The Legend of the Amazons The legend of the Amazons begins in the distant realms of ancient Greece, where myth and reality intertwined, creating tales of valor and mystery. These fierce warrior women, unmatched in their prowess and dedication, resided in the illustrious queendom of Themyscira. This was not merely a place but a symbol of empowerment, a bastion where the principles of strength, honor, and sisterhood reigned supreme. Nestled along the Thermodon River, Themyscira was a land where the landscape itself seemed to echo the resilience and fortitude of its inhabitants. The dense forests were a rich green, teeming with life, while the rolling hills and fertile plains provided sustenance for both body and spirit. At the heart of this queendom stood the Grand Temple of Artemis, their revered goddess. Artemis, the goddess of the hunt and protector of women, was their guiding star, the celestial embodiment of their ideals and aspirations. The Amazons held Artemis in the highest regard, their daily lives intertwined with rituals and ceremonies dedicated to her honor. The Grand Temple, an architectural marvel, was adorned with intricate carvings and statues that depicted their heroic deeds and devotion. Here, under the watchful gaze of Artemis, the Amazonian queens, princesses, and warriors would gather, their collective spirit resonating through the sacred halls. Amazonian society was one of balance, where the fierce and the nurturing coexisted harmoniously. Their customs were deeply rooted in the ancient rites that transformed girls into formidable warriors. From an early age, Amazonian girls were immersed in rigorous training, their days filled with physical challenges and mental fortification. These rites of passage were not merely tests of strength but ceremonies that bound them to their heritage and each other. The transformation began with the rite of endurance, a grueling test designed to push the young initiates to their limits. The girls were led into the dense forests, where they faced the wild, harnessing their instincts and learning to survive against nature's fury. It was during these trials that they encountered the untamed spirit of Artemis, felt in every rustling leaf and echoing animal call. They emerged from the forest not just as survivors, but as warriors bonded to the land and its mysteries. Following the rite of endurance was the trial of the blade. Each initiate was given a sword, a symbolic gesture of their burgeoning strength and resolve. Under the tutelage of seasoned warriors, they honed their skills in combat, mastering the art of the blade. The clang of steel against steel was a melody of empowerment, each strike and parry a testament to their growing prowess. The trial of the blade was a sacred tradition, a reminder that while they revered peace, they were ever prepared to defend their queendom and ideals. In the final rite, the ceremony of sisterhood, the initiates were welcomed into the fold of warriors with open arms and hearts. This ceremony, held under the full moon's glow, was a night of celebration and unity. The warriors donned ceremonial armor, each piece meticulously crafted and passed down through generations. The young women, now fully-fledged Amazons, stood before their elders and peers, their faces illuminated by the flickering light of torches and the moon's ethereal glow. The queen, a paragon of grace and power, would address them, her voice echoing through the temple and beyond. She spoke of their legacy, the unbroken chain of valor and sacrifice that each Amazon was now a part of. She extolled the virtues of courage, loyalty, and wisdom, reminding them that their strength was not merely in their arms, but in their hearts and minds. As the ceremony concluded, the newly anointed warriors were bestowed with their Amazonian name, a symbol of their rebirth. This name, chosen by the elders, reflected their unique qualities and the path they had forged. It was a name that would be whispered in reverence and fear across the lands, a name that would carry the weight of their legacy. 
In the quiet moments that followed the celebration, the warriors would often reflect on their journey. They stood as living testaments to the power of female resilience and camaraderie. They were bound by their shared experiences, their trials and triumphs. In their hearts, the fire of their ancestors burned brightly, illuminating their path forward. The Amazons of Themyscira were not just warriors. They were the embodiment of a spirit that defied subjugation and embraced empowerment. Their story, woven with threads of myth and reality, was a testament to the indomitable will of women united under the banner of Artemis. The legacy of the Amazons, born in the sacred rites and rituals of their queendom, would echo through the annals of history, inspiring generations to come. And so, the legend of the Amazons was not just a tale of war and conquest, but a celebration of female strength and solidarity. It was a reminder that within every woman lay the potential for greatness, a spark that, when kindled, could illuminate the darkest of times. The Amazons, with their fierce determination and unwavering spirit, stood as beacons of hope and empowerment, their legacy a guiding light for all who dared to dream of a world where women stood tall, proud, and unyielding. Chapter 2. A World at War The air was thick with the tension of impending conflict, a world on the brink of war. The Trojan War, a clash of titans and a saga of legendary heroes, was a tale etched deeply into the annals of history. This monumental conflict, born of love and betrayal, would draw the attention of the fierce Amazons and their indomitable queen, Penthesilia. The origins of this war lay in a seemingly simple yet fateful act. Paris, the young and impetuous Prince of Troy, had been granted the impossible task of judging a beauty contest among the goddesses Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Each goddess offered him a tempting bribe, but it was Aphrodite's promise of the most beautiful woman in the world that ensnared his heart. That woman was Helen, Queen of Sparta, wife of Menelaus. Paris, inflamed by desire and spurred by Aphrodite's promise, journeyed to Sparta. Under the guise of diplomacy, he beguiled Helen, and together they fled to Troy. This audacious act was more than a mere elopement. It was a profound affront to Menelaus, king of Sparta, and an insult to his honor. Menelaus, incensed and humiliated, called upon the might of the Greek states. His brother Agamemnon, the powerful king of Mycenae, answered the call, and together they summoned the greatest warriors of Greece. Heroes like Achilles, Odysseus, and Ajax joined their ranks, forming an unparalleled coalition determined to lay siege to Troy and reclaim Helen. The Greek armada, a vast fleet of a thousand ships, set sail across the Aegean Sea, their sails billowing like ominous clouds on the horizon. They arrived at the gates of Troy, a city of magnificent walls and indomitable spirit, ready for a conflict that would last a decade and become the stuff of legends. Amid this backdrop of war and turmoil, the call for aid reached the distant land of Themyscira. The Amazons, renowned for their martial prowess and unyielding loyalty to their allies, could not ignore such a summons. Queen Penthesilia, a figure of regal authority and unmatched skill in battle, resolved to join the fray. She was driven not merely by duty, but by a sense of destiny. For Penthesilia, the war was an opportunity to etch the Amazonian name into the annals of history and to fight for a cause that resonated with their own ideals of honor and bravery. Penthesilia rallied her warriors, each one a testament to the Amazonian spirit of valor. They prepared for the arduous journey to Troy, their hearts steeled for the trials ahead. As they embarked on their quest, the sun gleamed off their polished armor, each warrior a living embodiment of the legends they were destined to become. The journey to Troy was both perilous and invigorating. They crossed treacherous terrains, their resolve unwavering, driven by the rhythmic cadence of their purpose. As they approached the besieged city, the sounds of battle grew louder, a cacophony of clashing steel and war cries. The Amazons, undeterred, entered the fray with the ferocity of a storm. Penthesilia, mounted on her warhorse, led her warriors into battle. 
Her presence was a beacon of hope for the Trojans and a harbinger of doom for their enemies. She wielded her spear with unmatched precision, each strike a testament to her skill and strength. The sight of the Amazonian queen, her eyes blazing with determination, inspired her warriors and struck fear into the hearts of the Greeks. The arrival of the Amazons marked a turning point in the war. Their prowess in combat was unparalleled, their strategies both cunning and devastating. Penthesilia and her warriors fought with a unity and ferocity that left an indelible mark on the battlefield. They were not mere allies. They were a force of nature, embodying the relentless spirit of the Amazons and their unwavering dedication to their cause. Despite their valor, the war's tides were relentless and unforgiving. The Greeks, led by formidable heroes and driven by an unyielding resolve, proved to be formidable adversaries. The conflict raged on, each side suffering tremendous losses, their stories intertwined with both glory and tragedy. In the end, the fate of Troy would be sealed by the cunning of Odysseus and the relentless might of Achilles. But the legacy of the Amazons and of Queen Penthesilia would endure. Their valor in battle, their unyielding spirit, and their unwavering loyalty to their allies would be remembered as a beacon of female empowerment and warrior spirit. The story of the Amazons in the Trojan War was not just a chapter in the annals of conflict but a testament to their enduring legacy. They fought not just for Troy but for the honor and principles that defined them. Their story, intertwined with the epic of the Trojan War, became a symbol of resilience and strength, a tale of women who dared to stand tall in a world at war. Chapter 3. The Stage is Set The sun rose over the plains of Troy, casting a golden light on a scene of both beauty and devastation. Before the towering walls of the ancient city, the battleground stretched out, a vast expanse of trampled earth and broken weapons. This was where the armies of Greece and Troy would meet, where heroes would clash and legends would be born. The Greeks had set up their camp on one side of the battlefield, a sprawling collection of tents and makeshift fortifications. Banners fluttered in the breeze, each bearing the symbol of a different Greek city-state. The soldiers moved with a purposeful energy, sharpening their swords and tending to their armor. Amidst them, one figure stood out, a warrior of unmatched stature and presence, Achilles. Achilles was a legend even before the war began. Known for his near invincibility, he was said to have been dipped in the river Styx by his mother, making him impervious to harm except for one small spot on his heel. His armor gleamed in the sunlight, and his spear seemed to hum with the promise of victory. Despite his fearsome reputation, Achilles was known for his sharp wit and a penchant for humor that sometimes lightened the grim reality of war. Patroclus, do you think they'll ever tire of this fighting? Achilles called out to his close friend and companion, a hint of a smile playing on his lips. Patroclus, busy adjusting his own armor, looked up and grinned. Not until we give them something else to talk about. Maybe a dance contest. Achilles laughed, the sound a brief, welcome relief from the tension that hung in the air. If only Hector could be persuaded to join, though I doubt the Trojans have much rhythm. On the other side of the battlefield, within the mighty walls of Troy, the Trojans prepared for yet another day of conflict. The city, with its towering gates and majestic towers, had stood firm against the Greek onslaught for years. Now, with the Amazons among their ranks, there was a renewed sense of hope and determination. Queen Penthesilia, the Amazonian leader, walked among her warriors, her presence a steadying force. Her armor, though battle-worn, shone with a fierce pride, and her eyes reflected a blend of steely resolve and compassionate leadership. She exchanged words of encouragement with her warriors, each greeting met with respect and admiration. Remember, she said, her voice strong and clear, we fight not just for Troy, but for the honor of our people. We are Amazons. Let the world see our strength. One of her closest warriors, Antiope, couldn't help but add a touch of humor to the serious moment. 
and let's show them that we can fight as well as we can dance. Penthesilia chuckled, the lightness of the moment a brief respite. Indeed, though I doubt Achilles would fare well on a dance floor, the battlefield itself was a patchwork of devastation and resilience. The grass, once green and lush, was now torn and muddy, stained with the marks of countless battles. Broken chariots and abandoned shields littered the ground, silent witnesses to the ferocity of the conflict. Yet, despite the scars of war, there was a strange, rugged beauty to the scene. The distant sea glittered under the sun, and the hills beyond Troy stood tall, seemingly untouched by the chaos below. As the day wore on, both sides prepared for the imminent clash. The Greeks, under the command of Achilles, lined up in disciplined ranks, their armor and weapons gleaming with readiness. The Trojans, bolstered by the presence of the Amazons, took their positions, each warrior a testament to their combined strength and resolve. Achilles, standing at the forefront of the Greek army, surveyed the scene with keen eyes. He knew the battle ahead would be fierce, but there was an unmistakable thrill in the anticipation. He glanced toward the Trojan lines, his gaze searching for the Amazonian queen he had heard so much about. Penthesilia, with her reputation for unmatched skill and bravery, was a worthy opponent, and Achilles felt a rare spark of excitement at the thought of facing her. On the other side, Penthesilia also looked across the battlefield, her eyes finding Achilles. She had heard tales of his near invincibility, of his prowess and his pride. Yet she felt no fear. The Amazons had faced countless challenges before, and she was determined to show the Greeks that they were not to be underestimated. The stage was set. The armies were ready. As the first light of dawn gave way to the full brightness of day, the trumpets sounded, and the ground trembled with the march of warriors. The clash of shields and the roar of battle cries filled the air, a symphony of war that would echo through history. Achilles and Penthesilia, two warriors of legendary might, would soon meet in the heart of the conflict. Their encounter, destined to be both fierce and fateful, would add a new chapter to the epic tale of the Trojan War. Amid the chaos of battle, their stories of bravery, humor, and unyielding spirit would shine brightly reminding all who witnessed them of the power of courage and the enduring legacy of heroes. Chapter 4. Penthesilia Emerges As the sun began to rise over the battlefield, casting long shadows on the ground, the moment had come to unveil the story of Queen Penthesilia, the formidable leader of the Amazons. Her name alone inspired respect and fear among those who heard it, a testament to her strength and the legacy she carried. Penthesilia was born in the heart of Themyscira, the daughter of Atra and Ares, the god of war. From an early age, she was surrounded by tales of valor and courage. Her mother, Atra, was the first queen of the Amazons, a powerful leader who had built their society on the principles of strength, honor, and independence. Penthesilia grew up with these values deeply ingrained in her heart. Her training began when she was just a young girl. Like all Amazonian children, she was taught the art of combat and the skills of survival. But even among the Amazons, Penthesilia stood out. Her natural talent with the spear and her fierce determination quickly set her apart. Under the watchful eyes of the seasoned warriors, she honed her abilities, becoming a force to be reckoned with. As she matured, Penthesilia took on more responsibilities, eventually rising to the role of queen after her mother's passing. Her leadership was marked by wisdom and strength, qualities that earned her the unwavering loyalty of her people. She led the Amazons through numerous battles, each victory adding to her growing legend. Her experience on the battlefield was vast, her strategies both brilliant and bold. She was not just a warrior, she was a tactician, a leader who inspired her warriors to fight with unparalleled courage. Penthesilia's motivation for joining the Trojan War was deeply personal. The Amazons had always valued their alliances, and Troy had been a friend to Themyscira. But it was more than just loyalty to an ally that drove her. 
the war presented an opportunity to prove the might of the Amazons to the world, to show that they were equals to the greatest warriors of Greece. Penthesilia also saw the conflict as a chance to honor her lineage and the legacy of her mother, to fight for a cause that resonated with the very core of her being. But there was another layer to her decision. The war had claimed many lives, and Penthesilia carried the weight of guilt for an accident that had taken the life of her sister, Hippolyta. She saw the Trojan War as a path to redemption, a way to honor her sister's memory through acts of bravery and heroism. As she prepared for battle, Penthesilia reflected on her journey. She stood by the river that flowed through their camp, the water a calm contrast to the chaos of war. Her thoughts drifted to her sister, to the times they had trained together, and to the promise she had made to protect their people. She tightened her grip on her spear, a silent vow that she would fight not just for Troy, but for Hippolyta, for her people, and for the honor of the Amazons. When Penthesilia emerged on the battlefield, she was a sight to behold. Clad in her battle armor, her presence exuded confidence and power. Her helmet, adorned with a crest of horsehair, caught the sunlight, creating an almost ethereal glow around her. Her spear, the weapon she wielded with unparalleled skill, was ready for the clash of battle. She looked out over the battlefield, her sharp eyes taking in every detail, every movement. She saw Achilles in the distance, the Greek champion who was said to be nearly invincible. But she felt no fear. In her heart, she carried the spirit of her ancestors and the strength of her people. As the armies clashed once more, Penthesilia led her warriors with a fierce cry, her voice rising above the din of battle. She moved through the chaos with grace and precision, her spear striking true with each thrust. The Greeks, taken aback by her ferocity, struggled to hold their ground. Her warriors followed her lead, their determination matching her own. The battlefield became a stage for her prowess. Each enemy that fell before her was a testament to her skill and her resolve. She fought not just with her body, but with her spirit, her heart burning with the fire of her purpose. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, the battle raged on, each moment bringing her closer to her inevitable confrontation with Achilles. The soldiers on both sides watched in awe as Penthesilia carved a path through the Greek ranks. Her reputation grew with each passing hour, stories of her bravery spreading like wildfire. She was more than just a queen. She was a symbol of what it meant to be an Amazon. Her actions spoke of honor, courage, and an unbreakable will. As the day drew to a close, the anticipation of the clash between Penthesilia and Achilles grew. Both were champions, their fates intertwined by the war that had brought them to this moment. The stage was set for a battle that would echo through history, a confrontation that would decide more than just the outcome of a single war. In the coming chapter, the epic encounter between these two legendary warriors would unfold. The world held its breath, eager to see who would emerge victorious and what new stories would be written in the blood and sweat of battle. The legend of Queen Penthesilia was just beginning, her name destined to be remembered for generations to come. Chapter 5. Achilles the Antagonist As the day of battle loomed, the figure of Achilles stood out among the Greek forces like a titan among men. His presence was as commanding as the stories told about him, stories that painted him as nearly invincible, a warrior favored by the gods. To understand the essence of Achilles, one had to delve into the man behind the legend, the driving forces that brought him to the blood-soaked fields of Troy. Achilles was born to Peleus, a mortal king, and Thetis, a sea nymph. This divine lineage bestowed upon him extraordinary strength and near invulnerability. The tale of his invincibility began with his mother, who, in an effort to protect him from harm, dipped him into the river Styx, holding him by the heel. This single act rendered every part of his body impervious to injury, except for his heel, the one vulnerable spot that would later be known as his Achilles heel. From a young age, Achilles showed remarkable talent in the arts of war. 
Trained by the wise centaur Chiron, he mastered the spear, the sword, and the chariot. His skill in battle was unmatched, his speed and agility legendary. By the time he reached adulthood, Achilles had already carved a name for himself as the greatest warrior of his time. His prowess was so formidable that even the mere sight of him on the battlefield struck fear into the hearts of his enemies. Among the Greeks, Achilles was both a hero and a figure of awe. His comrades revered him, knowing that his presence alone could turn the tide of battle. Yet, there was more to Achilles than just his martial skills. He was known for his fiery temper and fierce pride, qualities that both endeared him to his friends and caused friction among the Greek leaders. His close companion, Patroclus, often tempered Achilles' more volatile tendencies, their bond one of deep friendship and mutual respect. Achilles' motivation for joining the Trojan War was multifaceted. Initially, he was drawn to the war by the promise of glory and the chance to prove himself as the greatest warrior of his age. The call to arms by Agamemnon, leader of the Greek forces, and the opportunity to fight alongside legendary heroes like Odysseus and Ajax, appealed to his desire for fame and honor. But underlying this was also a personal quest for immortality, not in the literal sense, but through the lasting legacy of his deeds. Achilles sought to ensure that his name would be remembered long after he was gone. His feet sung by bards and chronicled in the annals of history. However, his journey in the Trojan War was not just driven by glory. There were personal slights and deep-seated grievances that fueled his actions. The most notable of these was his conflict with Agamemnon over the taking of Briseis, a captive woman Achilles had claimed as a prize of war. When Agamemnon, asserting his authority, took Briseis from Achilles, it sparked a fierce anger in him, leading him to withdraw from the battle in a display of his pride and sense of honor. This withdrawal had dire consequences for the Greeks, who suffered greatly without their greatest warrior. Yet, it was also during this period that Achilles' character was most deeply tested. The death of his beloved friend Patroclus, who took up Achilles' armor and went into battle in his stead, shattered him. Patroclus was killed by Hector, the Trojan prince, and this loss ignited a profound rage in Achilles, transforming his motivation from one of glory to one of vengeance. Achilles' return to the battlefield was marked by a fury that was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. His confrontation with Hector was a climactic moment in the war, a duel that ended with Hector's death and Achilles' grim satisfaction. Yet, despite his triumph, there was a haunting emptiness in his victory. The death of Patroclus had left a wound that glory and vengeance could not heal. As the war dragged on, Achilles' reputation among the Greeks was solidified. He was their champion, the embodiment of martial excellence and heroic stature. His armor, a gift from the gods crafted by Hephaestus, shone like the sun, making him appear almost godlike on the battlefield. His spear, said to be unbreakable, was an extension of his will, a tool of destruction that seemed almost supernatural in its lethality. But Achilles was also a man of deep contradictions. His moments of tender humanity, especially in his grief for Patroclus, contrasted sharply with his brutal efficiency in battle. He could be both compassionate and merciless, a hero and an antagonist depending on the perspective. His motivations for fighting in the Trojan War evolved as the conflict wore on. What began as a quest for eternal glory became a personal crusade for vengeance and a search for meaning amidst the chaos of war. Achilles' story was not just about a warrior seeking fame, but about a man grappling with his own identity, his losses, and his place in a world defined by conflict. As the dawn broke over the battlefield, Achilles prepared for the day's fight with the same relentless focus that had carried him through countless battles. He knew that today might bring him face to face with Penthesilea, the Amazonian queen. He had heard of her prowess and her fierce determination, and the prospect of facing such a formidable opponent intrigued him. The stage was set for an epic confrontation. Two legendary warriors, each driven by their own complex motivations, were destined to meet in the heart of battle. 
Achilles, with his near invincibility and fiery spirit, would clash with Penthesilea, the embodiment of Amazonian strength and honor. Their encounter would be a defining moment in the Trojan War, a battle that would be remembered for ages to come. As the armies gathered and the sounds of war filled the air once more, the anticipation grew. The world watched with bated breath, eager to witness the clash of titans and to see how the fates of these two remarkable figures would unfold. The story of Achilles, the antagonist, was far from over, and the next chapter promised to bring new twists to the epic saga of the Trojan War. Chapter 6. The First Skirmish The sun hung high in the sky, casting its relentless heat over the battlefield, as if determined to witness the clash of titans. The air was thick with anticipation and the smell of dust and sweat. The Amazons, led by their formidable queen Penthesilea, stood ready on one side, their eyes fixed on the Greeks. On the other side, the Greek forces, with Achilles at their head, prepared for the first encounter with the legendary warrior women. As the signal for battle was given, the ground shook with the thunder of hooves and the clash of armor. The Amazons surged forward, a wave of fierce warriors, their battle cries echoing across the plains. They moved with a unity and purpose that was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. Penthesilea, at the forefront, her spear held high, led the charge with an unwavering determination. The Greeks, seasoned warriors all, met the Amazons with equal ferocity. Achilles, his golden armor gleaming in the sunlight, was a beacon of strength and courage. He rallied his men, urging them to stand firm against the oncoming onslaught. The clash was immediate and brutal, the sound of metal on metal filling the air as the two forces collided. Penthesilea's spear danced through the chaos, striking down enemies with precise, powerful thrusts. She moved with a grace that seemed almost otherworldly, her every action a testament to her training and skill. Around her, the Amazons fought with a ferocity that matched her own, their loyalty and trust in their queen evident in every move. Achilles, too, was a sight to behold. His spear seemed to have a life of its own, striking with deadly accuracy. His presence on the battlefield was commanding, his movements swift and powerful. He fought with a mixture of skill and raw power that made him nearly unstoppable. His men drew strength from his example, pushing back against the Amazonian assault with determination. The battle raged on, neither side willing to give an inch. The Greeks and the Amazons were evenly matched, their warriors equally skilled and equally determined. The air was filled with the sounds of battle cries, the clash of weapons, and the groans of the wounded. Dust rose from the ground, mingling with the blood that stained the earth, creating a scene of both horror and heroism. Penthesilea and Achilles, though separated by the chaos, were acutely aware of each other's presence. Their reputations had preceded them, and both knew that a confrontation between them was inevitable. For now, they led their respective forces with unyielding resolve, their eyes scanning the battlefield, taking in every detail. At times, it seemed as if the Amazons might gain the upper hand. Their unorthodox tactics and unparalleled bravery kept the Greeks on their toes, forcing them to adapt quickly. Penthesilea's leadership was evident in the way her warriors moved, their attacks coordinated and their defense solid. Yet, the Greeks were not easily outdone. Achilles, with his strategic mind and formidable skills, countered every Amazonian move with precision. His warriors, inspired by his example, fought with renewed vigor, their lines holding firm against the Amazonian tide. Every time it seemed the Amazons might break through, the Greeks pushed back with equal force. The sun began its descent, casting long shadows over the battlefield, but still, neither side gained a clear advantage. The ground was littered with the fallen, both Amazon and Greek, a testament to the ferocity of the fight. The warriors, exhausted but undeterred, continued their relentless struggle, each one driven by loyalty, honor, and the will to win. As the battle wore on, 
Both Penthesilea and Achilles showed no signs of slowing. Penthesilea's eyes burned with a fierce determination, her spear never faltering. She inspired her warriors with her bravery, her presence a rallying point for the Amazons. Achilles, equally resolute, moved through the fray with the precision of a master, his spear a blur of deadly motion. The skirmish drew to a close with neither side emerging victorious. The Amazons and Greeks withdrew to their respective camps, their warriors weary but unbroken. The battlefield, now quiet, bore the marks of their fierce struggle, a stark reminder of the day's events. As night fell, the camps buzzed with activity. The wounded were tended to, and the dead honored. There was a sense of anticipation in the air, a knowledge that today's clash was only the beginning. Both sides knew that the war was far from over, and that the battles to come would be even fiercer. In the Greek camp, Achilles stood by the fire, his mind replaying the events of the day. He knew that the Amazons were formidable opponents, and that Penthesilea was a leader of unmatched skill and bravery. He looked forward to the challenge that lay ahead, eager to face her in battle. In the Amazonian camp, Penthesilea tended to her warriors, her thoughts also on the day's events. She knew that Achilles was a warrior unlike any she had faced before, and the prospect of their eventual confrontation filled her with both anticipation and resolve. She was determined to prove the strength of the Amazons and to honor the legacy of her people. The first skirmish had set the stage for what was to come. Both sides had tested each other's strength, and the respect they had for their opponents only fueled their determination. The clash between Achilles and Penthesilea was inevitable, a meeting of legends that would define the course of the war. As the stars twinkled above, the warriors of Greece and Themyscira rested, their minds on the battles yet to come. The war was far from over, and the world waited with bated breath to see how the epic saga of Achilles and Penthesilea would unfold. The next chapter promised more fierce battles, heroic deeds, and the unyielding spirit of warriors who fought for honor, glory, and the legacy of their people. Chapter 7. Gathering Allies As the dust settled on the battlefield, the Amazons and the Trojans found themselves united by a common cause. The fierce skirmish with the Greeks had forged a bond between them, a recognition of shared strength and shared enemies. In the aftermath of the battle, discussions began among the leaders of both factions, laying the groundwork for an alliance that would alter the course of the war. For the Amazons, the decision to ally with the Trojans was a strategic one. They had long admired the courage and resilience of the people of Troy, and their queen, Penthesilea, saw an opportunity to strengthen their position against the Greeks. The Trojans, led by King Priam and his sons Hector and Paris, welcomed the Amazonian warriors with open arms, recognizing the value of their martial prowess and their unwavering loyalty. The alliance between the Amazons and the Trojans had a profound effect on both sides' strategy and morale. For the Trojans, who had been locked in a seemingly endless struggle against the Greeks, the arrival of the Amazonian warriors brought a renewed sense of hope and determination. The Amazons' reputation as fierce fighters and skilled tacticians bolstered the Trojans' confidence, and their presence on the battlefield shifted the balance of power in their favor. On the other side, the Amazons found in the Trojans' kindred spirits, fellow warriors who shared their values of honor and independence. The Trojans' resilience in the face of adversity inspired the Amazons, strengthening their resolve to fight alongside their new allies. Together, they formed a formidable force, united by a common purpose and a shared vision of victory. The alliance between the Amazons and the Trojans also had practical implications for their strategy. With their forces combined, they were able to mount more coordinated attacks against the Greeks, exploiting weaknesses in their defenses and launching bold offensives that kept their enemies on the back foot. The Trojans, with their knowledge of the terrain and their strategic cunning, complemented the Amazons' martial prowess, creating a synergy that made them a force to be reckoned with. As the war raged on, the alliance between the Amazons and the Trojans continued to strengthen. They fought side by side on the battlefield, 
their warriors covering each other's backs and their leaders coordinating their efforts with precision. The bond forged in battle grew deeper with each passing day, transcending the boundaries of nation and tribe. Yet, even as they celebrated their victories and mourned their losses together, both the Amazons and the Trojans knew that the road ahead would be long and fraught with peril. The Greeks, led by the indomitable Achilles, remained a formidable foe, and the battles to come would test their alliance to its limits. But for now, in the glow of their newfound partnership, the Amazons and the Trojans stood tall, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Their alliance was a testament to the power of unity in the face of adversity, a beacon of hope in a world consumed by war. As they prepared for the battles yet to come, their hearts beat as one, fueled by the shared desire to triumph against all odds. Chapter 8. Exploring Warrior Culture In the heart of the ancient world, two mighty warrior cultures stood as epitomes of strength and valor, the Amazons and the Greeks. Each society was shaped by its own unique beliefs, rituals, and combat skills, reflecting the values and ideals of its people. As the clash of civilizations unfolded on the battlefield of Troy, the differences between these two warrior cultures became starkly evident, influencing their fighting styles and shaping the course of the war. The Amazons, born of the goddess Artemis and raised in the queendom of Themyscira, revered strength, independence, and the pursuit of excellence in combat. Their society was matriarchal, with women holding positions of power and authority. From a young age, Amazonian girls were trained in the arts of war, their skills honed through rigorous training and discipline. Combat was not just a means of survival for the Amazons. It was a way of life, a sacred duty to protect their land and their people. Central to Amazonian warrior culture were the ancient rites that transformed girls into warriors. These rituals, steeped in tradition and mysticism, marked the passage from girlhood to womanhood and imbued the Amazons with a sense of purpose and identity. The Amazons believed that their strength came from their connection to the goddess Artemis, and they paid homage to her through elaborate ceremonies and rituals. In contrast, Greek warrior culture was characterized by a deep reverence for honor, glory, and the ideals of heroism. The Greeks, with their city-states and democratic ideals, placed great value on individual prowess and courage in battle. Warriors were celebrated as heroes, their deeds immortalized in epic poetry and art. Combat was seen as a noble pursuit, a way for men to prove their worth and earn eternal fame. At the heart of Greek warrior culture were the ideals of Arete and Cleos. Arete, often translated as excellence or virtue, encompassed the qualities of courage, strength, and skill that defined a true warrior. Cleos, on the other hand, referred to the glory and renown that warriors earned through their heroic deeds. These ideals motivated Greek warriors to strive for greatness, to seek out challenges and overcome them with courage and skill. The differences between Amazon and Greek warrior cultures were reflected in their combat styles. The Amazons favored speed, agility, and precision, using their mastery of the spear, bow, and sword to devastating effect. They fought with a disciplined ferocity, their movements fluid and graceful yet deadly. Their tactics were often unconventional, relying on ambushes, feints, and surprise attacks to outmaneuver their opponents. In contrast, Greek warriors relied more heavily on brute strength and brute force, using their shields and spears to form tightly packed phalanxes that could withstand even the most ferocious assaults. Their combat style was more rigid and disciplined, with an emphasis on coordination and teamwork. Greek warriors were trained to fight as a cohesive unit, their ranks unbroken even in the face of overwhelming odds. The differences in combat styles between the Amazons and the Greeks had a profound influence on the course of the war. The Amazons' agility and adaptability allowed them to exploit weaknesses in the Greek defenses, while the Greeks' discipline and resilience enabled them to withstand the relentless assaults of their Amazonian foes. Each side brought its own strengths and weaknesses to the battlefield, creating a dynamic and ever-shifting struggle for supremacy. Yet, 
Amidst the chaos of war, there were moments of mutual respect and admiration between the Amazons and the Greeks. Despite their differences, they recognized the skill and bravery of their opponents, forging bonds of camaraderie that transcended the boundaries of nation and tribe. In the crucible of conflict, they found common ground, united by the shared experience of battle and the enduring legacy of warrior culture. Chapter 9 Betrayal in the Ranks In the heart of the Amazonian camp, whispers of betrayal began to spread like wildfire, casting a shadow over the once unbreakable bond of sisterhood. The discovery of a Trojan spy within their ranks had sown seeds of discord and mistrust among the warrior women, threatening to unravel the unity that had been their greatest strength. Penthesilia, the queen of the Amazons, stood at the center of the storm, her leadership tested as never before. The revelation of betrayal struck a blow to her confidence, but she knew that she could not afford to falter. The safety of her people and the success of their alliance with the Trojans depended on her ability to navigate this treacherous situation with wisdom and resolve. The discovery of the Trojan spy had sent shockwaves through the Amazonian ranks. Questions were raised, accusations hurled, as suspicion turned friend against friend. The once tight-knit community now found itself fractured, with doubts and fears threatening to tear them apart from within. Penthesilia knew that she had to act swiftly to restore order and maintain cohesion among her warriors. She called upon her most trusted advisors, gathering them in council to devise a plan to root out the traitor and restore trust within their ranks. Together, they mapped out a strategy using cunning and guile to trap the spy and expose their treachery. But even as they worked to uncover the truth, Penthesilia could sense the weight of uncertainty hanging heavy in the air. The bond that had held her warriors together through countless battles now seemed fragile, on the verge of shattering under the weight of suspicion and fear. As the investigation progressed, tensions within the Amazonian camp reached a boiling point. Accusations flew, tempers flared, and friendships were tested as loyalty was called into question. Penthesilia watched with a heavy heart, knowing that the true test of her leadership lay not in the heat of battle, but in the crucible of betrayal. In the midst of the turmoil, Penthesilia remained a steady presence, her calm demeanor a beacon of strength for her warriors. She listened to their concerns, their fears, their doubts, offering words of reassurance and guidance. She reminded them of the values that had always defined their society, honor, loyalty, and the unwavering bond of sisterhood. Slowly, as the truth began to emerge, the fog of mistrust began to lift. The spy was unmasked, their treachery laid bare for all to see. With the threat neutralized, the Amazonian warriors rallied around their queen once more their unity restored and their resolve strengthened by the trials they had endured. For Penthesilia, the betrayal in the ranks had been a test of her leadership, a crucible in which her mettle had been forged anew. She emerged from the ordeal with a deeper understanding of the responsibilities that came with her position, and a renewed determination to lead her warriors with wisdom, compassion, and strength. As the Amazonian camp settled into an uneasy peace once more, Penthesilia looked to the future with a sense of cautious optimism. The road ahead would be fraught with challenges and dangers, but she knew that as long as her warriors stood united, they would face whatever trials came their way with courage and resilience. The betrayal in the ranks had been a harsh lesson, but it had also been a reminder of the unbreakable bond that bound them together as sisters in arms. Chapter 10 escalation of conflict. The Trojan War dragged on, stretching into years of endless battles and growing despair. The fighting between the Greeks and the Trojans, now joined by the fierce Amazons, became more brutal with each passing day. The land around Troy, once green and full of life, was now a desolate battlefield, marked by the scars of war. The Greeks, camped outside the great walls of Troy, were growing weary. Their tents were scattered across the plain, a constant reminder of their long struggle. Soldiers moved with heavy steps, 
their faces hardened by the endless fighting. Among them, Achilles stood out, his presence a mix of strength and grim determination. He was a legendary warrior, nearly invincible, but even he felt the weight of the prolonged conflict. Another day, another battle, Achilles said to Patroclus, trying to lighten the mood. Do you think we'll ever see the end of this? Patroclus, his closest friend, sighed. We can only hope, but until then we fight. On the other side, within the mighty walls of Troy, the Trojans and Amazons prepared for yet another clash. Queen Penthesilia, leader of the Amazons, moved among her warriors, offering words of encouragement and strength. Her eyes, sharp and focused, showed no fear. She knew that each day brought new challenges, but she also knew the Amazons were ready. Stay strong, Penthesilia said, her voice clear and firm. We fight for Troy, and we fight for each other. The battles were fierce and unforgiving. The Greeks and Amazons met on the field with a clash of swords and shields. Each side determined to win. The fighting was brutal, with neither side willing to give up an inch of ground. Blood stained the earth, and the cries of the wounded filled the air. Casualties mounted on both sides. The Greeks, led by Achilles, fought with a relentless drive, but even their strength was tested by the unyielding spirit of the Amazons. The Amazons, with their unmatched skill and bravery, struck back fiercely, but they too suffered losses. The once tight-knit ranks of warriors began to show signs of wear and fatigue. Tensions rose as the war dragged on. In the Greek camp, frustration grew. Achilles, despite his confidence, could see the toll the war was taking on his men. He tried to keep their spirits up, but the constant fighting weighed heavily on them all. In Troy, the mood was equally tense. The city, though still standing, bore the marks of the relentless siege. The Trojans, inspired by the presence of the Amazons, fought with all their might, but the endless battles drained their strength. The once hopeful spirit of the defenders now struggled against the creeping despair. Despite the mounting pressure, moments of humanity still shone through the darkness. Acts of kindness and bravery were seen on both sides, reminding everyone that even in the midst of war, there was still room for compassion. Warriors who faced each other in battle sometimes found themselves helping a fallen enemy, their mutual respect transcending the conflict. Penthesilia remained a beacon of hope for her warriors. She knew that the strength of the Amazons lay not just in their combat skills, but in their unity and spirit. She gathered her warriors, reminding them of their heritage and the cause they fought for. We are Amazons, she said. We stand together, no matter the cost. Achilles, too, reflected on the nature of the war. His encounters with the Amazons, especially with Penthesilia, gave him a new perspective. He respected their bravery and skill, seeing in them a reflection of his own determination. Despite being enemies, a grudging respect grew between them. The war showed no signs of ending. Each day brought new battles, new losses, and new challenges. Yet, amid the chaos and bloodshed, the stories of the Amazons and Greeks became intertwined. Their legacies were forged in the crucible of war, each warrior a testament to the power of courage and the bonds of loyalty. As the sun set on another day of fierce fighting, both sides prepared for what lay ahead. The Amazons, their spirits unbroken, stood ready to face the next challenge. The Greeks, driven by their determination, steeled themselves for the battles to come. The war raged on, shaping the destinies of all who fought in its shadow. The legend of the Amazons and the epic tale of the Trojan War continued, a story of bravery, sacrifice, and the enduring human spirit. The escalation of the conflict tested everyone, pushing them to their limits and beyond. Yet, in the midst of the war, the courage and strength of the Amazons and Greeks shone brightly, their stories a beacon of hope in a world consumed by conflict. Chapter 11 a turning point. The sun rose over the battlefield, 
casting long shadows across the land where the Greeks and Trojans had clashed. The Trojans had won a great victory, and the Greeks were left demoralized, their spirits broken by the unexpected defeat. Murmurs of doubt and fear spread through the Greek camp as they contemplated their next move. Achilles, the greatest of the Greek warriors, felt the weight of this loss keenly. He knew that something had to be done to restore the morale of his men and turn the tide of the war. His thoughts turned to the Amazon queen, Penthesilia, whose fierce leadership had inspired the Trojans and struck fear into the hearts of the Greeks. Determined to challenge her, Achilles made his way to the Trojan camp. He sent a messenger ahead, bearing his challenge to Penthesilia. The message was clear. A duel between their two leaders, a fight to decide the fate of their armies and the future of the war. Penthesilia received the challenge with a calm resolve. She knew the stakes were high, and that this battle could change everything. She accepted Achilles' challenge, ready to face him in a fight that would test both their strengths and their wills. The two armies gathered on the battlefield, forming a circle around the two warriors who would decide their fate. The tension was palpable as Achilles and Penthesilia stepped forward, their eyes locked in a steely gaze. The air was thick with anticipation, each side holding its breath as the duel began. Achilles, known for his near-invincible prowess, moved with the speed and strength of a lion. His sword flashed in the sunlight as he lunged at Penthesilia. But the Amazon queen was no less formidable. She met his attacks with grace and precision, her movements swift and sure. The clash of their weapons rang out across the battlefield, each strike a testament to their skill and determination. The duel was fierce and unrelenting, neither warrior giving an inch. Sweat and blood mingled as they fought, their faces set in grim determination. As the battle wore on, it became clear that this was not just a test of strength, but of willpower and endurance. Both Achilles and Penthesilia pushed themselves to their limits, their every move calculated and precise. The soldiers watching from the sidelines were awestruck by the display of skill and bravery. For the Greeks, this was a chance to see their greatest warrior prove his might. For the Trojans, it was an opportunity to witness their queen's unparalleled courage and leadership. The duel raged on, each warrior finding new reserves of strength within themselves. They fought not just for their own honor, but for the fate of their people, knowing that the outcome of this battle would influence the war. In the end, it was clear that this fight would be remembered for generations to come. As the sun set, casting a golden glow over the battlefield, both armies knew that the events of this day would shape the course of history. The duel between Achilles and Penthesilia marked a turning point in the war, a moment of intense struggle and bravery that would be spoken of in legend and song for years to come. Chapter 12. Crisis Point. The sun climbed higher in the sky, casting a harsh light over the battlefield, where the duel between Achilles and Penthesilia was about to commence. Soldiers from both camps gathered, forming a wide circle around the designated area. Tension crackled in the air, and the ground itself seemed to tremble with anticipation. Achilles, the Greek champion, stood tall and imposing. His armor gleamed, and his spear was poised, ready to strike. His reputation as an almost invincible warrior had spread far and wide, instilling both fear and respect. His eyes were fixed on his opponent, the Amazon Queen, with a mixture of determination and curiosity. Penthesilia, resplendent in her Amazonian armor, faced Achilles with unwavering resolve. Her stance was both graceful and powerful, embodying the spirit of her people. Her spear, an extension of her will, was held steady in her hands. The Amazon Queen's eyes, filled with fierce determination, met Achilles' gaze without flinching. The duel began with a resounding clash of spears. Achilles and Penthesilia moved with lightning speed, their weapons striking and parrying with deadly precision. The spectators watched in awe as the two warriors engaged in a dance of death, each movement calculated, each strike executed with perfect skill. 
Achilles lunged forward, his spear aimed at Penthesilea's heart. She deflected the blow with a swift motion, her spear sweeping upwards in a counterattack. Achilles sidestepped, his reflexes honed by countless battles. He swung his spear in a wide arc, forcing Penthesilea to leap back, her feet barely touching the ground as she evaded his attack. The crowd was mesmerized by the display of martial prowess. Every move, every strike, was a testament to the extraordinary skills of the combatants. The sound of clashing metal filled the air, punctuated by the occasional grunt of effort. The tension was palpable, the outcome uncertain. Penthesilea seized an opening, thrusting her spear toward Achilles with incredible speed. He barely managed to block the attack, the force of the blow sending a shockwave through his arm. He countered with a powerful strike, but Penthesilea twisted away, her agility saving her from what could have been a fatal hit. Despite the intense combat, both warriors maintained a sense of respect for each other. They recognized the exceptional skill and determination in their opponent. This duel was not just a fight to the death. It was a contest of honor and valor. As the duel progressed, the strain began to show. Sweat dripped down their faces, their breaths coming in heavy gasps. Yet, neither showed any sign of giving up. Achilles, with his near invincibility, pressed on with relentless force. Penthesilea, with her unmatched skill and determination, fought back with equal ferocity. The spectators were on the edge of their seats, their eyes glued to the fierce combat. Soldiers from both sides found themselves united in their admiration for the warriors before them. The duel had transcended the conflict, becoming a symbol of strength and honor. Achilles launched a powerful attack, his spear aimed at Penthesilea's chest. She parried the blow with a swift motion, her spear deflecting his with a resounding clash. She spun around, her spear slicing through the air toward Achilles. He barely managed to dodge, the tip of her weapon grazing his armor. The intensity of the duel reached its peak. Each strike was more powerful, each defense more desperate. The ground around them bore the marks of their struggle, the earth scarred by the ferocity of their battle. The air was thick with the energy of their conflict, the spectators barely daring to breathe. In a final, desperate clash, Achilles and Penthesilea met in the center of the battlefield. Their spears locked, their faces inches apart. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. The world around them faded, leaving only the two warriors locked in a struggle that would determine their fates. With a mighty effort, Achilles pushed forward, breaking the deadlock. Penthesilea staggered back, her strength waning, but she refused to yield. Summoning the last of her strength, she launched a final, determined attack. Her spear struck with precision, aiming for Achilles' one vulnerable spot. Achilles, with a Herculean effort, deflected the blow. He countered with a swift, powerful strike, his spear finding its mark. Penthesilea fell to the ground, her body betraying the exhaustion of the relentless battle. Achilles, too, staggered, his strength nearly spent. The battlefield fell silent. The duel was over, but the impact of the fight resonated deeply among the spectators. Both Greeks and Amazons watched with a mix of awe and sorrow, recognizing the extraordinary bravery and skill displayed by their leaders. Achilles, standing over the fallen Amazon queen, felt a profound respect for his opponent. He knew that this duel, this moment, would be remembered as a testament to the indomitable spirit of both warriors. Penthesilea, even in defeat, had proven herself a true warrior, deserving of honor and reverence. As the sun set over the plains of Troy, the soldiers began to disperse, the weight of the duel's significance heavy on their hearts. The duel between Achilles and Penthesilea had not only been a fierce contest of strength, but a powerful reminder of the courage and honor that defined the greatest warriors. The crisis point had passed, but the war was far from over. The legacy of the duel would live on, inspiring both sides to fight with renewed fervor. The story of Achilles and Penthesilea, their fierce combat and mutual respect, 
would echo through the ages, a shining example of the warrior spirit and the timeless quest for honor. Chapter 13 The Fall of Penthesilea The sun dipped lower in the sky, casting long shadows over the battlefield where the duel between Achilles and Penthesilea had reached its zenith. The air, thick with the scent of sweat and steel, held an uneasy stillness as the two warriors faced each other, their eyes locked in a final, unspoken challenge. Achilles, his muscles straining and sweat dripping from his brow, circled Penthesilea with a predatory grace. Every movement was calculated, every breath a measured preparation for the decisive strike. Penthesilea, though visibly exhausted, stood resolute. Her spear, though heavy in her hands, remained steady, a testament to her unyielding spirit. The two warriors clashed once more, their spears meeting with a force that echoed across the battlefield. Sparks flew from the contact, a brilliant display of their unmatched skill and determination. Achilles thrust forward with a powerful strike, aiming to break through Penthesilea's defenses. She parried the blow, her movements a blend of agility and strength. But the battle had taken its toll. Penthesilea's reactions were slowing, her body pushed to its limits. Achilles, sensing her weakening state, pressed his advantage. He swung his spear in a wide arc, forcing Penthesilea to dodge and counter with dwindling energy. Each clash was a reminder of her incredible resolve, yet the inevitability of her exhaustion loomed large. The spectators, both Greek and Amazon, watched in breathless anticipation. They could see the struggle etched into every movement, the desperation in each strike. The Amazons, their hearts heavy, prayed silently for their queen, while the Greeks looked on with a mixture of respect and somber expectation. Achilles advanced with relentless force, driving Penthesilea back. She fought valiantly, each defense a marvel of skill, but the strain was evident. Her breath came in ragged gasps, her once sure footing now unsteady. Achilles saw his moment. With a final, powerful thrust, he drove his spear just beneath her breastplate. Penthesilea staggered, her eyes wide with pain and realization. She clutched at the wound, feeling the warmth of her life's blood seep through her fingers. The world seemed to slow as she fell to her knees, the strength that had carried her through countless battles now ebbing away. The battlefield was silent, the weight of the moment pressing down on everyone present. Achilles stood over Penthesilea, his expression a mixture of triumph and profound respect. He had bested a warrior of unparalleled skill and honor, and he knew the significance of her fall. The Amazons, seeing their queen struck down, cried out in anguish. The sound was a haunting chorus of sorrow and defiance. They rushed forward, but it was too late. Penthesilea, their fierce and noble leader, lay dying on the battlefield. Her eyes, still filled with the fire of her spirit, met Achilles one last time. Achilles, she whispered, her voice barely audible. You have fought with honor. Achilles knelt beside her, his demeanor softened by the gravity of her words. And you, Queen Penthesilea, have shown the world what it means to be a true warrior. Penthesilea's eyes closed, a final breath escaping her lips. Her body grew still, and with it, the indomitable spirit of the Amazon queen passed into legend. The Greeks and Amazons alike bowed their heads, paying silent tribute to a fallen hero. The Amazons faced a crushing defeat, their hearts heavy with grief. Their queen, the beacon of their strength and courage, was gone. But in her death, she left a legacy that would inspire them for generations to come. She had fought with unparalleled bravery, and her story would be told in hushed reverence, a reminder of the power and honor of the Amazons. Achilles, standing alone in the midst of the battlefield, felt the weight of his victory. He had won the duel, but it was a victory tinged with sorrow and respect. The fall of Penthesilea was a testament to the brutal realities of war, but also to the enduring spirit of those who fought with honor and valor. As the sun set, 
Casting a crimson glow over the field, the soldiers began to retreat to their respective camps. The battle was over, but the war was far from finished. The memory of Penthesilius' last stand would haunt the battlefield, a poignant reminder of the cost of conflict and the enduring legacy of a true warrior queen. The fall of Penthesilia marked a turning point in the Trojan War. Her death was a symbol of both the tragedy and the honor of battle. The Amazons, though grieving, were more determined than ever to fight in her memory. And the Greeks, having witnessed the extraordinary bravery of their foes, felt a newfound respect for the warriors they faced. The legend of Penthesilia, queen of the Amazons, would live on, her name etched into the annals of history. Her fall was not just a moment of defeat, but a testament to the unyielding spirit of a warrior who fought for her people and her honor until the very end. Chapter 14. Achilles' Remorse. In the aftermath of the fierce battle, Achilles knelt beside the fallen body of Queen Penthesilia, his heart heavy with remorse and newfound emotion. As he cradled her in his arms, he was struck by her beauty, even in death, and by the skill and courage she had displayed on the battlefield. Tears welled in Achilles' eyes as he looked upon the face of the Amazon queen. In her final moments, Penthesilia had fought with a ferocity and determination that had awoken something deep within Achilles. A sense of awe and admiration unlike anything he had ever known. Gently, Achilles brushed a lock of hair from Penthesilia's face, his touch tender and reverent. He could feel her life slipping away, her spirit slowly fading into the ether. And in that moment, Achilles felt a profound sense of loss. A loss not just of an enemy, but of a kindred spirit, a warrior worthy of his respect and admiration. I am sorry, Achilles whispered, his voice choked with emotion. I am sorry for the pain I have caused you, for the lives that have been lost because of me. His words were a lament, a plea for forgiveness that he knew could never be granted. But as he looked into Penthesilius' eyes, he saw something that stirred his soul, a glimmer of understanding, of acceptance. In her final moments, she forgave him, not out of weakness, but out of a strength that surpassed even death. And as Penthesilius' spirit slipped away, carried on the wings of eternity, Achilles wept. He wept for the loss of a brave and noble warrior, for the senseless violence that had torn them apart, and for the love that had blossomed between them in the midst of war. In that moment of sorrow and regret, Achilles vowed to honor Penthesilius' memory. He would carry her spirit with him always, a guiding light in the darkness of war and strife. And though their time together had been brief, he knew that he would never forget the Amazon queen who had captured his heart and awakened his soul. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting its golden glow over the battlefield, Achilles remained by Penthesilia's side, his heart heavy with grief and remorse. But even in death, her spirit lived on, a testament to the power of love and forgiveness in a world torn apart by war. Chapter 15. The Amazon's Last Stand. In the shadow of the setting sun, the remaining Amazons stood vigil over the body of their fallen queen, Penthesilia. Their hearts heavy with grief, yet their spirits ablaze with determination. They prepared to make their final stand against the relentless tide of Greek warriors. Surrounded on all sides by the enemy, the Amazons knew that their chances of victory were slim. But they were warriors, fierce and unyielding, and they would not go down without a fight. With swords drawn and shields raised, they braced themselves for the onslaught that was sure to come. The Greeks, led by the mighty Achilles himself, advanced with grim determination. Their numbers were overwhelming, their weapons gleaming in the fading light. But the Amazons did not waver. They stood their ground, their eyes fixed on their fallen queen, a silent vow to protect her memory at all costs. As the first clash of steel rang out across the battlefield, the air was filled with the sound of battle cries and the screams of the wounded. The Amazons fought with a ferocity born of desperation, their blades flashing in the dying light. But for every Greek warrior they felled, two more seemed to take their place. The Amazons were outnumbered and outmatched, 
their ranks steadily dwindling as the battle raged on. Yet still, they fought on, their hearts aflame with the fire of defiance. In the midst of the chaos, Queen Penthesilea's body lay untouched, a silent testament to the bravery and sacrifice of her warriors. Though the odds were stacked against them, the Amazons refused to abandon their fallen queen. They would protect her to the last, even if it cost them their lives. And so, as the sun dipped below the horizon and darkness descended upon the battlefield, the last of the Amazons stood tall, their resolve unbroken even in the face of certain defeat. They fought with all the strength and skill they possessed, a final tribute to their fallen queen and to the ideals for which she had given her life. But in the end, the Amazons' courage was not enough to overcome the Greeks' superior numbers. As the last of their warriors fell, their bodies forming a protective ring around Penthesilea's still form, the Greeks claimed victory. Yet even in defeat, the spirit of the Amazons endured. Their bravery, their sacrifice, would be remembered for generations to come, immortalized in song and story. And though they may have fallen on the battlefield that day, their legacy would live on, a testament to the power of courage, honor, and the unbreakable bond between sisters in arms. Chapter 16, The Funeral Pyre. The battlefield was silent as the Greek warriors, led by Achilles, approached the gates of Troy. They bore a somber burden, the body of Queen Penthesilea, the Amazonian warrior who had fought with unparalleled courage and skill. Her death at the hands of Achilles had marked a turning point in the war, and now, in a gesture of respect and honor, the Greeks were returning her body to the Trojans. The gates of Troy creaked open, and King Priam, flanked by Hector and the remaining leaders of Troy, stepped forward to receive their fallen ally. The Trojans stood in hushed reverence, their eyes fixed on the lifeless form of Penthesilea. Her face, serene in death, still bore the fierce determination that had defined her life. Achilles, his usual demeanor tempered by a rare solemnity, handed over Penthesilea's body. She was a warrior like no other, he said, his voice low and respectful. She deserves the honor of a hero. King Priam nodded, his eyes filled with a mixture of sorrow and respect. Thank you, Achilles, he replied, his voice heavy with emotion. She will be honored as she deserves. The body of Penthesilea was carried through the streets of Troy, where the people lined the way, their heads bowed in grief. The Amazons, who had fought valiantly alongside their queen, walked with a quiet dignity, their faces etched with sorrow. They had lost their leader, their sister, and their inspiration. The funeral pyre was constructed outside the city walls, a towering structure of wood and flowers. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the scene, the Trojans and Amazons gathered to pay their final respects. King Priam stood beside the pyre, his face a mask of grief and resolve. Today, we bid farewell to a true hero, he began, his voice carrying across the assembled crowd. Queen Penthesilea fought with honor and bravery. She came to our aid in our darkest hour and gave her life for our cause. Her spirit will forever be a part of Troy. Hector stepped forward, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. Penthesilea was not just a warrior. She was a beacon of hope and strength. Her legacy will live on in the hearts of those who fought beside her and in the stories we will tell for generations. The Amazons, led by their new queen, Antiope stepped forward. Antiope's voice was steady but laden with emotion. Penthesilea was our queen, our sister, and our guide. She embodied the spirit of the Amazons, brave, strong, and unyielding. Her sacrifice will never be forgotten, and her spirit will guide us always. As the pyre was lit, flames leaped into the sky, their roar mingling with the soft murmur of prayers and songs of mourning. The fire consumed the wood and flowers, enveloping Penthesilea's body in a final embrace. The flames danced and flickered, casting shadows that seemed to echo the fierce spirit of the fallen queen. The Trojans and Amazons stood side by side, their shared grief forging a bond that transcended the battlefield. The loss of Penthesilea was deeply felt by all. For the Trojans, she had been a valiant ally who had come to their aid in their time of need. 
For the Amazons, she had been a leader, a symbol of their strength and independence. As the pyre burned, the Trojans reflected on the impact Penthesilia had made in her short time with them. She had brought hope and a renewed sense of purpose, showing them that even in the darkest times, there was still room for heroism and sacrifice. Her bravery had inspired them to continue their fight, even in the face of overwhelming odds. For the Amazons, the funeral was a time of deep introspection and resolve. They mourned the loss of their queen but also celebrated her life and the legacy she left behind. Penthesilia had shown them the true meaning of courage and leadership. Her ashes would be taken back to Themyscira, where they would be enshrined in the sacred grounds of their homeland, a lasting tribute to her memory. As the last embers of the pyre died down, the crowd dispersed, each person carrying with them a piece of Penthesilea's spirit. The Amazons began their journey back to Themyscira with a renewed sense of purpose, their hearts heavy but their resolve unbroken. They would continue to fight, to honor their queen's legacy, and to uphold the values she had embodied. The Trojans returned to their city, their spirits bolstered by the bravery of their fallen ally. They knew the war was far from over, but Penthesilea's sacrifice had given them a renewed sense of hope and determination. They would fight on, not just for Troy, but for the memory of the Amazon queen who had stood beside them. In the days that followed, stories of Penthesilea's bravery spread throughout the land. Her name became a symbol of strength and courage, a reminder that even in the face of insurmountable odds, the spirit of a true warrior could shine through. Her legacy lived on in the hearts of those who had fought beside her and in the stories that would be told for generations. The funeral pyre had been a solemn farewell, but it was also a celebration of a life lived with honor and bravery. Penthesilea's spirit would continue to inspire, her memory a guiding light for both the Amazons and the Trojans as they faced the challenges ahead. The war was not over, but the legacy of Queen Penthesilea would endure, a testament to the power of courage and the strength of the human spirit. Chapter 18. The Legacy of Penthesilea and Achilles As the dust settled on the ruins of Troy and the survivors of the Trojan War began to rebuild their lives, the legend of Penthesilea, the fierce Amazon queen, and her adversary Achilles, the greatest of Greek warriors, lived on in songs and sagas that echoed through the ages. The tale of Penthesilea, with her unmatched bravery and skill in battle, became a symbol of female empowerment and resilience. Her name was spoken with reverence among the Amazons, who saw in her the embodiment of their ideals, strength, independence, and honor. Her legacy inspired generations of women to defy convention and forge their own destinies, just as she had done on the blood-soaked fields of Troy. In the songs of bards and the stories of storytellers, Penthesilea's exploits were celebrated. She was hailed as a hero, a warrior queen who had fought alongside her sisters to defend their way of life. Her memory was enshrined in the annals of Amazonian history, her name whispered with reverence by those who sought to follow in her footsteps. But Penthesilea's legacy was not confined to the Amazonian lands. Her story spread far and wide, carried by travelers and traders to distant lands where her name became synonymous with courage and strength. In the courts of kings and the halls of nobles, her tale was told and retold, each telling adding to the legend that surrounded her. Alongside Penthesilea stood Achilles, the Greek hero whose name was known throughout the world. His deeds, both on and off the battlefield, were the stuff of legend. From his early exploits as a young warrior to his fateful encounter with Penthesilea on the plains of Troy, Achilles' story captivated the imaginations of all who heard it. In the years that followed the war, Achilles' name became synonymous with martial prowess and divine favor. He was revered as a hero among the Greeks, his feats celebrated in epic poems and heroic ballads. But he was also a figure of tragedy, his life marked by hubris and untimely death. The story of his heel, the one vulnerable spot that led to his downfall, became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the fragility of even the mightiest of heroes. The legacy of Penthesilea and Achilles intertwined, their names forever linked by the bonds of war and fate. Their epic confrontation on the battlefield became the stuff of legend, a tale of two titans locked in a struggle that would echo through the ages. 
Theirs was a story of courage and sacrifice, of honor and tragedy, and it would be told and retold for generations to come. As the world moved on from the Trojan War, the memory of Penthesilea and Achilles lived on in the hearts and minds of those who had witnessed their deeds. Theirs were the stories that inspired heroes and poets, warriors and kings. And though the world changed and civilizations rose and fell, the legend of the fierce Amazon queen and the greatest Greek warrior endured, a testament to the enduring power of myth and the human spirit. Chapter 19. The Erosion of Time. As the centuries passed, the once mighty queendom of Themyscira and its warrior women began to fade into myth and dust, their legacy slowly eroded by the relentless march of time. The stories of their once great civilization became shrouded in mystery and legend, their memory preserved only in the tales passed down through generations. Themyscira, once a thriving hub of Amazonian culture and power, became little more than a whisper on the winds of history. The grand palaces and temples that had once stood as a testament to the strength and resilience of the Amazonian people crumbled into ruin, reclaimed by the wilds of nature. The warrior women who had once called Themyscira home became figures of myth and legend, their exploits exaggerated and embellished with each retelling. They were remembered as fierce and untamed, their skills in battle unmatched by any mortal man. But as time wore on, even their memory began to fade, lost to the annals of history. The Amazons themselves became a subject of speculation and debate among scholars and historians. Some dismissed them as mere fantasy, the product of overactive imaginations and ancient myth-making. Others believed that there might be some kernel of truth to the tales, that perhaps, somewhere in the distant past, there had indeed been a society of warrior women who had lived and fought as equals. But regardless of the truth, the legacy of the Amazons endured. Their story became a symbol of female empowerment and independence, inspiring women throughout the ages to defy convention and forge their own paths. The name Themyscira became synonymous with strength and resilience, a reminder that even in a world dominated by men, women could rise up and challenge the status quo. And so, as the centuries passed and the world changed, the memory of Themyscira and its warrior women lived on in the stories and legends that were told and retold around campfires and in the halls of kings. Though their civilization may have faded into myth and dust, the spirit of the Amazons endured, a testament to the enduring power of the human imagination and the timeless appeal of stories of bravery, honor, and adventure. Chapter 20, Epilogue. In the annals of history, the legacy of the Amazons and their fierce queen, Penthesilea, endures as a haunting reminder of the beauty, tragedy, and power of a race of warrior women that will never again grace the earth. The story of the Amazons, with their fierce independence and unmatched skill in battle, continues to captivate the imagination of all who hear it. Their queendom of Themyscira, once a beacon of strength and resilience, has become a symbol of female empowerment and defiance against the status quo. Penthesilea, the greatest of the Amazon queens, stands at the heart of this legend, a figure of myth and legend whose name is whispered with reverence and awe. Her bravery and skill in battle are legendary, her sacrifice on the fields of Troy immortalized in the annals of history. But more than just a warrior, Penthesilea represents the tragic beauty of the Amazonian civilization, a civilization that was both feared and admired, revered and reviled. Theirs was a world of contradictions, where strength and vulnerability, courage and tragedy, existed side by side. As the centuries pass and the world changes, the memory of the Amazons and their queen lives on in the stories and legends that are passed down through generations. Their tale serves as a reminder of the enduring power of the human spirit, the boundless potential of women, and the timeless allure of adventure and heroism. Though the Amazons may have faded into myth and dust, their legacy endures, a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who dare to defy convention and forge their own destinies. And though they may never again walk the earth, their memory will live on in the hearts and minds of all who hear their story. A story of strength, of courage, 
and of the eternal quest for freedom and justice.